video presentation is brought to you in collaboration with Commando Blog. For articles on firearms, militaria, and more, read today. While everything used to create this video presentation is purchased through personal and private funds. Amazon affiliate links below will provide a small kickback to the author. Thank you. The 92FS is a double action, single action, full size handgun that has shown glowing success in Operation Desert Storm and Desert Shield for the United States military, various law enforcement agencies, the French and Italian militaries, and also various law enforcement agencies. But is the Beretta 92FS sustainable and is it the right ideal for the armed citizen? Let's find out. How the Breton 92FS works is that there is a double action, single action trigger with decocker and safety. From there, the magazine gets loaded, the flight gets pulled back. And notice that the uh, hammer is in the rearward position. To decock it, press on the decock lever and push up to make it on fire. From there, the handgun can safely be holstered. Yet, with double action, single action, there will be an initial hard 12 pound trigger pull. And from there, after we clear this, the hammer is in rearward position. There is a bunch of creep and slop, but afterwards there is a much lighter five pine trigger pull. And when the slide is locked back to the rear, you insert another magazine and use a slide release or, you, or do an overhand um, pull or pinch underhand pinch movement with the slide. The safety and trigger is different than single action auto loaders such as the 1911. But the hammer is locked in the rearward position with the safety activated. Or pistols that have a trigger safety like a Glock that is simply holstered. If anything, the falling block recoil mechanism and trigger remind me very much of the Alpha P Soviet. Sides come in two different configurations, a three dot configuration on the 92FS and a two dot vertical configuration as shown on the M9. These sights offer a nice side picture with good visibility and are an improvement over the small sights and legacy handguns such as the GI 1911 or older revolvers. Slide is exposed in front of the ejection port. While Beretta claims it improves reliability, it doesn't alleviate stove piping. It also complicates the manual of arms, especially when using an overhanded slide release technique, and it's easy to inadvertently activate the safety when reloading and create problems when shooting. Using the slide release only for reloading is less than ideal, especially when using worn out military issue magazines. And using the pinch style grip with a thumb and index finger also is an optimal lever. 
grip is rather bulky and it may cause problems with shooters with smaller hands. The American style magazine release is, however, easy to use and also reversible for left-handed operators. There is a built-in lanyard loop at the bottom for positive retention of the pistol for duty use. The 92FS does hold 15 shots in factory configuration. Unfortunately, military issue magazines have reliability issues. I strongly suggest that you get factory magazines or from Metgar. While average for caliber, more compact striker fired handguns like the Glock 19 hold the same capacity in a compact frame. Similarly sized handguns such as the Glock 17 hold 17 shots. The handgun in its current configuration has no provisions for lights, lasers, or reflex sights. At least the aftermarket can offer adapters for mounting lasers and lights. Let's take a break and do a quick history lesson here. The Beretta 92 was originally created back in 1976 with a slide mounted safety in the European style heel magazine release. Later in the mid 1980s, the design has been updated with the additional features such as a firing pin block, American style magazine release, updated sights, and other refinements. In the United States military, the Joint Service Small Arms Program, or the JSSAP, was created in 1977 with the accomplishment of three main goals. One goal was to replace or retire the aging stock of 45 Auto M1911A1 handguns. The other goal was to bring the United States into compliance with NATO standards with the NATO adoption of the 9x19mm pistol cartridge. An additional goal of the JSSAP is to streamline logistics and to standardize on a service pistol for the Department of Defense. In 1983 and 1984, under the JSSAP, there is a creation of the XM9 pistol trials, from which the Department of Defense would test and evaluate various 9mm NATO handguns, such as from Beretta, SIG, H&K, Smith & Wesson, Colt, Steyr, Walther, and FN. Eventually, submissions from Beretta and SIG, the Beretta 92F and the SIG P226, passed testing through the XM9 trials and the Beretta was able to secure a contract with a lower unit cost per handgun. Afterwards, the Beretta 92F was adopted by the U.S. military as the M9 pistol. The adoption of the M9, however, was met with controversy. For example, there had been reports of slide failure of the newly adopted handgun with improperly loaded ammunition, where the slide would break and fly rearwards, striking the operator in the face. There also has been new complaints about the perceived stopping power of the 9mm NATO pistol cartridge compared to the 45 ACP as used in the previous 1911. These controversies over the M9 have resulted in the XM10 pistol trials, which Ruger has submitted their own P85 handgun for testing. However, we may have had a setback in terms of weapon design, as the XM10 hot dog gun was never formally adopted, which could have created a new paradigm for a combat effectiveness. Beretta also further refined the slide with a new hammer and trigger pin design to prevent further facial injury to the operator with an enlarged firing pin design, which is designated as a 92FS. While currently the Beretta 92FS and M9 handguns enjoy military adoption and have seen success in Operation Desert Shield and Desert Storm, Kosovo and Somalia enjoyed adoption by the French and Italian militaries, been adopted by several law enforcement agencies. And for the armed citizen, they enjoy a popularity in both competition and personal protection. Yet, with a large frame, what's going to happen in the future to the 92FS? For the concealed carrier, I prefer my Glock 19, which holds the same amount of rounds in the magazine at a smaller and lighter size. If I want to add a weapon mounted light to the dust cover of the weapon, I can do so without modification or further adapters or attachments. What's going to happen in the future with the military once the Breton A2 handguns wear out? I think these polymer frame striker fired handguns will now compete against these DASA ones. Or maybe afterwards the DOD might create a new controversial pick with something that is found at a cheaper price but could also fail and have quality control issues. Who knows? Write to us and tell us what you think. Thanks for watching.